You know that feeling. The day you depart for a trip that you've planned for months. You rise to greet your chariot before the sun's rays can touch you with its kiss. All the prepping completed, all systems go, and your childhood excitement and enthusiasm heats up. Well, today, that's us as we depart for Disney's Fort Wilderness. Welcome to the channel. This is pretty obvious by now that we're on the way to Fort Wilderness in Orlando, Florida. And it's been a couple of years since we've been there with all the health issues that are going on right now. We don't know what to expect, but we're definitely looking forward to it. Happy New Year to you. How you doing today? Oh, hanging in there, sir. How can I help? Be checking in. Nice girl, right? Uh-huh. Check in now. You want to change the lane over there with the green light and the short line. Okay, great. Thank you very okay, much. Well. Appreciate you. Yes, checking in for Tullison. Hey, well, thank you. You guys have your magic pants already? Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You have a local pack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as you can see, we're here at the fort, and like always, we're really enjoying our visit here. Yeah, we really are, and after being here for a few days, Clay and I began to discuss the price of staying here at the fort, 
and we started asking the question, why is it so much more expensive than the average campground that we've stayed in? I mean, we're paying, on average, $170 per night. <gasps> So why is so expensive here at the fort? Well, let's look at the benefits of staying at a Disney resort, which Fort Wilderness is. Yeah, first of all, it's tied straight to the theme parks. Yep. As a Disney resort guest, uh, you get to pick your fast pass and reservations to dinner and shows 60 days out instead of the normal 30 days out. You also get extra magic hours where guests at the uh, guests who are staying here at the Disney Resorts yep. get to have access to the property and theme parks right. before they open and even after they close so you can avoid some of the crowds and right. ride your favorite rides. Right. And then also there's free transportation to the theme parks so you can avoid the $25 to $50 per day parking depending on what type of vehicle you have and it's very convenient. Okay, so what if I want to stay at, you know, the Ford and not visit a theme park? What else justifies the expense of staying here? Yeah, well, to solve that mystery, <laughs> let's go play detective and look for some clues and see if we can find that answer. Okay, let's ride. To solve this case, we'll need the best fastest cruiser we can find. Well, I guess a golf cart I have to do. And we'll begin where any good detective would. At the beginning. In the beginning, I mean the entrance to the park. We may not solve much today, but we're gonna have a great time showing you the park and some of its features. And folks, just be aware, if you visit the fort during the pandemic, they are serious about face masks and only approved face masks are allowed. For days now, we noticed employees standing at strategic locations and I wanted to confirm my thoughts as to why. Making sure that everybody's wearing their face covering. Okay. And if they don't have one, we have some that we can give them. Yes, ma'am. If they have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Yes. So, thanks for the info. You're very welcome. Yes, ma'am. Have a magical time. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. So, simply put, make sure you have an approved mask. Now, on to the entrance where Clay will reveal our first clue. So, our first clue to solving the mystery of why the fort might be more expensive than other campground is found here behind me where they have security checkpoints to enter the resort. The checkpoint is staffed 24 7 with a security booth. All who enter must pass through this controlled access point first. So that's something that you don't see at most campgrounds. For our next clue as to why the fort might be so expensive, we simply need to turn around and look up the street to where Daryl is standing. Ever been to a campground where you had trouble finding where to check in? Well, you won't have that issue here at the fort. Here, they call the six lane check-in area the reception outpost, where you never even have to leave your vehicle to get your site number or to get information on the park. And all of our arrivals have always been met by friendly professional employees who are called cast members here at the fort. They always seem to have plenty of helpful staff to ensure our stay is enjoyable. And clue number three for solving this mystery may even go unnoticed. It's the large overflow parking area for guests who arrive early and for those whose sites or cabin may not be ready or available. You can also have family or guests who are visiting you at your campsite to park here. Therefore, no need to crowd up the campsite. That's a large parking area. You don't see that at most campgrounds. Now Clay has clue number four. Clue number four is the golf cart rentals. They have around 400 carts in their inventory and the pick up and drop off is staffed 24 seven. There's a rental fee to offset the cost, but my guess is the rental may not pay for all the expenses. And now Daryl is standing at clue number five. Fifth clue to solving our mystery as to why you may pay a lot here at the fort is the bus transportation. Here, you can catch a bus that'll take you throughout the 750-acre campground with over a dozen bus stops. You can also catch a bus to Disney Springs as well as to all the theme parks. And these are clean buses, not some beat up, broken down bus. Keep in mind, that's some expensive equipment and of course it requires a significant amount of staff to operate. Once again, that level of service is not found at most campgrounds. 
for our sixth clue, how about a campground that houses dozens of horses and the staff to handle and care for the animals? Here at the Price Circle D Ranch Trail Rides, you can take trail rides through the beautiful resort. There is a fee for the service that I'm sure helps to offset the cost. But what a cool option for those who enjoy the outdoors on horseback. Horseback trail rides are not unique to the fort, but what a great feature to have. Now for our next clue, we need to hop back in our cruiser and take another ride. Just wanted to give you a quick look at some campsites, which we won't even count as a clue for the expense because let's face it, there are many campgrounds that have very nice campsites. We'll shoot through what is called a typical premium loop. And as you can see, the campsites here have beautiful landscapes and most providing very nice privacy. All the loops have a comfort station with restrooms and showers, along with washers and dryers, even an ice machine. Again, this is not even counted in our list of clues as to the expense, but the next one is, and that brings us to clue number seven. Could the fort be pricey due to the resort providing staff and equipment to ensure that your campsite is free of any debris and any trash that's left behind is removed and to make sure you have a clean grill, not to mention a little wash down before the next guest arrives. And don't forget about those who keep the trash cans empty or how about a campground that even provides staff and equipment to keep the streets clean. That's right, they have a street sweeper here in Fort Wilderness. I don't recall ever seeing that in another campground, but we're not done. How about staff and equipment? for park security who patrols in marked cars 24-7. Clay, what clue do you have for us on number eight? So clue number eight, as to why you might pay more at the fort, well, it has not one, but two stores that they call trading post. Behind me is the Meadows Trading Post, and on the inside, well, it's a Disney store with gifts, drinks, food, and of course, it's staffed with full-time employee who keeps the store running. And the second trading post is called the Settlement. That's located at the marina, which we'll visit shortly. A nice feature that is rarely seen at most campgrounds. And on to clue number nine. For clue number nine, we take you to the bike barn, where you can rent bikes, kayaks, and canoes. And if your personal bike needs a little air, well, they have that covered too. They have tennis courts and volleyball. It has two pools. The one here at the Meadows is the largest, and it also has a snack bar. All staffed with personnel who work from morning into the evening and even into the night hours. Not so far away, you can try your luck with a compound bow at the archery experience. There is a fee, but it's not even an option at most campgrounds. For clue number 10, the outdoor movie theater. Where when the sun goes down, the movies crank up. Not only do they have movie night here, but this is also where Chippendale performs their shows. Check out their website for shows and times. Now back to the cruiser as we travel for our next clue. Just for extra points, notice the great walkways and paths located here inside the fort. It even has a two and a half mile jogging path, a dog park that's almost the size of a football field. And that puts us at clue number 11. And clue number 11 connects us to clue number six, 
the Tricircle D Ranch Stables. Which has a long history of housing the happiest horses on earth. This newly enhanced barn houses Cinderella's ponies and the horses of Main Street USA. The new stable features larger stalls, including 10 additional stalls. The new barn is more than twice the size of the original. With two tack rooms and a small museum dedicated to Walt Disney's love of horses. You can even see some of the horses here up close. Along with the museum, the ranch now is home to the iconic piece of Disney history. It's the 1907 Dragon Calliope. Walt Disney purchased the horse-drawn musical wagon for Disneyland back in 1950 and it's currently on display here at Fort Wilderness Campground. Pretty cool. And the little ones, well, they can enjoy a pony ride out back. Nonetheless, I'm not sure which call center the ranch is connected to, but I read there's over 90 horses and 35 employees. So that's a hefty price tag to be sure. Man, what a great visit. And now for our last few clues, come with us to the marina. <laughs> Will the remaining clues solve the mystery as to why the fort is more expensive than the average campground? I'm not sure, but let's look at clue number 12, which is behind me, the marina. Here you have plenty of bike parking and golf cart parking, but no automobile parking, so be aware. There's the Clementine Beach, which is located here, which looks to have been extended on the right side. But over here on the left side, which is where we used to come and watch the fireworks shot at the Magic Kingdom, it's been closed off. I'm told because they're building a new Disney 900 room resort. Interesting. At the marina though, it's where you can rent boats and hire fishing guides. And of course, anyone who's been here before knows what that sound and what that boat means. That's our ride to the Magic Kingdom. And also during this time, the smaller boat coming right there, it usually transports you to the Wilderness Lodge or the Contemporary. But that service has been suspended temporarily due to the pandemic. So now it's here to assist guests going to the Magic Kingdom. The campground does offer bus service to those two resorts while the boat service is suspended. These boats work their way back and forth all day and into the night. The marina has currently suspended all boat rentals again due to the pandemic. But you can still schedule a fishing charter. And now for the final clue, let's go to Clay. So our 13th clue here at the fort is the three restaurants behind me. The Hoopty Doo Review, which is a dinner show, Crockett's Tavern, and p and Southern Takeout. While we were here, they brought out a food truck for some food choices. Don't see that in your average campground. Oh, and just for extra points, there is also an arcade and a very nice playground all here at Pioneer Hall. Has the mystery been solved as to why it is so expensive here? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think we've answered a lot of questions as to why it's pretty pricey, but I really do think that it's just, it just depends. On what? On who you ask. Well? For example, do you think that it's worth the price to stay here? I think it is because of all the amenities and the people that it takes to run this place and you know, and we use a lot of the amenities anyway, you know, or have used them, so I think so. What about you? Uh, I still think it's overpriced. Now, does that mean that I won't be back to visit from time to time? Yeah, no, would. absolutely I will. <laughs> I, I do, I love, I love Fort Wilderness, but yeah. I do think it's a little pricey. Yeah. 
Well, that's all we have for today, and we thank you so much for watching. Yeah, we hope to see you in the next video. Until then, be, be well, well and stay, stay safe. safe.